What's the point you sang in this section? <laughs> that without this category, you wouldn't. How would you finish it? You wouldn't even know he was having a pleasure. You wouldn't know whether or not it's pleasurable or not. Well, you wouldn't know if it was pleasurable or not. You don't have any reference point. You know it's pleasurable in the present tense. Would a modern agree with this? <clears throat> would they not say, fooey? Okay, they would not agree. They'd say your, body, your brain just... No, wouldn't they say, look her? Is that the little red hand? Oh. I said, look here, I don't need knowledge, I just experience it. That's for Liebes' position. I'm conscious of the pleasure. I don't need any kind of knowledge. I realize it is pleasure, I don't need this knowledge to experience it. Then how do you is realize it's pleasure? I think so. Is that what people would say? Yeah. Well, therefore, this is a faulty argument. I mean, it's okay for, you know, people in philosophy, but it's not worth it down in reality. Agree? Well, they throw in that word. They're conscious. right, aren't they? they? What they mean is memory when they say I'm conscious. No, no, they, they don't occur. Realize. I don't have to remember it. I just experience it. Oh, I don't need good. memory to yeah. agree. No, we I, still, I still don't show that you're intelligent. No, because in people the, who agree with me always look intelligent. <laughs> no, no. To me, even in cognitive <laughs> science, cognitive science, they'll talk about the role of the hippocampus for the memory. Yeah, you have to have a memory of it to know. Before what, you can, I mean, you have to have a memory in order to enjoy something. To know what. You, to know. You have to have a point of reference. But that's reflective. Yeah. To know is reflective, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that comes after you enjoy it. Case closed. <laughs> or would you say at the same time you're enjoying it, your mind is going through remembering? So you're doing two, two, three, two things at once? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And you're also conscious of it, three things at once. Mm -hmm. And you also realize it's pleasure. No wonder people are having a lot of trouble 
good pleasure. So many things going on at the same time. So they're all hyperactive. The <laughs> <laughs> She's right. And by the way, if it's happening at the same time, can you distinguish each of the parts? If you want to help. And how do you know that's happening at the same time? If you can't distinguish the things that are going on at the same time and say they're at the, going on at the same time, if you don't know the parts are going on at the same time. Uh, uh, uh. Right? Well, you don't know. <coughs> Thank you. Case <laughs> closed. You do if you analyze but you get it. get somebody else to tell you. Yeah, no. yeah, therefore, <laughs> you answer. No, you don't have to. What do you think your, your answer? Yeah. I'm yeah, still, what? I'm yeah. still there. You dropped it. No, no. Why are you holding on to it then? Because it's, I still... Because you like science or something? No, I'm telling you what their position is. No, 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 I'm I'm in, you judge their position in, in, in terms of what you just said. It's called coming to a conclusion. What do you think? Your position is, if I may remind you, that there are many things going on simultaneously with the experience of pleasure. And I said, good heavens, is it likely that the person knows that when it's going on? And you said, well, yes. it all goes on at once. I said, how can it all go on at once and the person realize it without knowing each of the things that are brought together into a union to experience it? Was that the point? Yeah. Oh, can you answer that then, please? Well, you can speak for them, unless you want to add your own personal view. They don't think about their hippocampus when oh. they're having a beer. But somebody who has gone on and studied people who are enjoying something, and they can see the hippocampus is light it up or something, and then... Are you answering the question by going into neurophysiology at this point? Yeah. I didn't notice it. The issue is if someone claims uh -huh. that there are many things going on at the same time, yeah. right, should they not have some evidence of each of these things mm -hmm. going on at the same time mm -hmm. and in a union while the person experiencing a cocktail or a beer or having pleasure? Or is this their theory that they're imposing on the experience? Does the subject who's experiencing it know that? No, they don't know that. Well, then what are they telling us? Their awareness. Something the subject doesn't know but they think is going on. Right. Isn't that rather curious? <coughs> What does that mean, then, of course, since you said yes? Well, I'm always skeptical if that's actually going on. You'd be skeptical that all of this is going on? Yeah. Therefore, you're not accepting that great point you were making. You have good reason to be suspicious of it and are ready to reject it. Or, it's pretty close to rejecting. Is that possible? Well, I might reject all that, but I would still say that there has to be memory in order to have pleasure. Okay, watch. Hey, drink, go ahead, take a drink. Okay. Watch now. Did you use memory at that moment? Uh-huh. How do you know you used memory at that moment when you were enjoying the coffee? Because I recognized the taste. You mean you couldn't recognize the taste if you just didn't, pardon me, whether you recognized the taste or not, was it pleasurable? It was that taste, yeah. I don't think I could even say it was so much pleasurable as You couldn't it. say it's pleasurable until you recognize the taste, is that yeah, what you're saying? that's what I'm calling the Oh, pleasure. well then you never experience pleasure, you recognize some past experience. Yeah. That's rather curious. Yeah. What does that do to the idea? Well, it makes it secondary. What's primary is that you're experiencing your memory. That's the main thing. Okay, look here. What are we doing? So, read that paragraph. What is he saying? How does he understand? See, 
He's trying to describe the moment of pleasure. That's what he's doing, isn't it? He's trying to describe the moment of pleasure in that section. Now look at the way he does it. But does this make sense or not? Come on. If you had no memory, you could not even remember that you ever did enjoy pleasure. That may be true. That doesn't mean you didn't experience pleasure at the moment. It just means that you couldn't remember that you had previously experienced pleasure. Agree? Yes. Make sure no. that we're leaving. Yes or no? Yes. And no recollection, whatever, of the present pleasure could remain with you. That's true. That doesn't deny that you're experiencing pleasure. Just means what? Can't you couldn't remember. use it for recollection. Is that true? Come on, stay with it. If you had no true opinion, you could not think you were enjoying pleasure at the time you were enjoying it. Why do you have to think about having a pleasurable experience when you're pleasuring it? Okay, you don't have any true opinion about it. So what? Can't you still be sipping your cocktail? Whoa. Uh-huh. Huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, therefore, keep going. If you were without power of calculation, you would not be able to calculate that you would enjoy it in the future. That's true. It doesn't deny you're not experiencing pleasure in the moment. Does it? Aren't these the things you would do with the experience of pleasure? Mm -hmm. The processing. Yeah. The pro it's all processing. It's the process. What do I do with it? Yeah. I just want to know the moment of the pleasure. Therefore, without those things, right? What's his conclusion? What's his statement, therefore, of a pure pleasure? You mean that it's like a, a mollusk? Right. <clears throat> therefore, it's not denying it exists by itself. Hmm. And that it is, in fact, an experience. Hmm. But, You'd have a life of a sea sponge. Oyster. Yeah. Right. Here's to the oysters. <laughs> <laughs> but when they get irritated, they make pearls. It's like a Jewish oyster. Yeah, it is. Oyster. <laughs> oh, that's a person who uses Yiddish terminology oh. in the sentence. So, is he denying you can have it? No. no. And all of those other things are things you would do with it, the consequence of having it. Is this true? I don't have to remember. No. But what about his first point? Oysters may not. What about all of these statements are true. But Pierre... <clears throat> uh, we Pierre. just need one more thing. If I had a prefrontal abutment. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> but the, the, the issue is, is that if a sensation is coming through, whatever it is, it, how can you identify it? But, but why would you have to identify it? Isn't that something that would follow the experience? Only if you admit that pleasure is the only possible experience. 
That's what he's saying. Only if you admit that pleasure is the only possible, possible experience. experience. Uh, I, think you, I think it may depend upon whether or not you can say you can have pleasure without any cognitive functioning whatsoever. Yeah, but and he's pointing out that an oyster might be in such a case. I haven't interviewed an oyster right? in ages. Do oysters talk? I haven't interviewed an oyster to find out. Well, you've heard the expression happy as a clam, haven't you? Where there do you think you it came from? The mud. The oyster bag. No. I have a... <laughs> it came from Paola. Here. Um, what about the first point that he makes? That where he says, I just, this, this, you would not know whether you were enjoying your pleasure or not. Right. Right. He says that. That's right. And... Um, it seems if you cut off the past, the present, the comparison, all of that stuff goes, right? That's right. And all you have is the experience. All you have is the moment. Mm -hmm. And if all you have in the moment... I don't think you would... I, it would not be possible for you to know right. that you were mm -hmm. enjoying. Right? You just have it. Right? The sensory field or whatever. Which is what makes you resemble an oyster. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I, I'm not sure that, that I'm not reasoning my way to it. Sorry, I was just trying to picture, you know, or I was trying to capture his words there, because to him that's obvious, right? He, he do, it doesn't look like he reasons from that in the first place. You would not know. Like, it's just a simple statement. Whether you enjoy your so, I was trying to visualize what's the what the logos is capturing, and that's where I came to the fact that um, you, if you don't discriminate. You need the mind to discriminate pleasure from non-pleasure. See, that's that's the step I'm making. Okay. That's not a defense. Okay. Push one more step. If someone were to hold that position, they could not hold that position. If they were to hold the position, which position? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Lunch. Okay. Okay. What would follow if they wanted to hold that position? The position they're holding is that pleasure is good. And there is nothing higher than pleasure being a good. It's not the position of, of Philippe. Yes. By the way, to make that position, what kinds of things must be must accompany you to be able to make that decision? All kinds of all kinds of discriminations, judgments. comparisons. Maybe. Right, right. That presupposes Yes. Knowledge. Yes. Right. And if he wants to say this alone is sufficient, then he cannot make that claim. Yes. Matter of fact, he'd likely not be able to make any claim. In yeah. other words, what he should do is just keep drinking. Because yeah. anything he says is a step away from that. Yeah. Yes. Would that follow? Now watch what he does with this. It's very interesting. So, um, he adds to knowledge now. Okay, I'd like to go to the next step. <clears throat> this argument Socrates made us speechless. <laughs> well, let's not give in yet. Let's take up the life of mind and scrutinize that in turn. Hmm. What sort of life do you mean? I ask whether anyone would be willing to live possessing wisdom and mind and knowledge and perfect memory of all things, but having no share, great or small, in pleasure or in pain for that matter, but being entirely unaffected by everything of that sort. So look here. That's the other side of this. Right. have them both. We, in a way, we could leave this, but I'll take it out and do it again.
things of the mind. You say, would that be possible without being affected by it? What does that mean? Right? They never studied Vulcan culture. Like, same thing as before. Let us assume this person is in fact experiencing that. Is it, is it necessary that in that experience they would be affected by it? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> but we could ask the same point. That's a consequence of being in this state. What would it be like parallel to the oyster if one were not affected by it? Same parallel. And that's why he's going in the next step. Protarchus. Neither of the two lives can ever appear desirable to me, Socrates, or I think to anyone else. Well, how about the combined life, made up of the union of two? I mean, the union of pleasure with mind or, or wisdom? Yeah, yeah, that's the sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, union of such elements. Well, everyone would prefer this to either of the other two. No exceptions. Then, hey, do you, do you understand the consequences of what you're saying? Yeah, certainly. Three lives have been proposed, and two of them, neither is sufficient or desirable for man or any other living being. Then is it not already clear that neither of these two contained the good? For if it did contain the good, it would be sufficient, perfect, such as to be chosen by all living creatures, which would be able to live thus all their lives. And if any of us chose anything else, he would be choosing contrary to the nature of the truly desirable, not of his own free will, but from ignorance or a sense of unfortunate necessity. Yeah, that seems true. And so I think we have sufficiently proved that Philebus' divinity is not to be considered identical with the good. But neither is your mind the good, Socrates. It will be open to the same objections. My mind, perhaps by Libus, but not so, I believe, the true mind, which is also divine, but is different. I do not as yet claim for mind the victory over the combined life, but we must look and see, blah, 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 blah. Looks like he's added another category, hasn't he? What would that be? True mind. True, True mind. mind. Oh. oh. So, is that another category? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that the experience of true mind need not have that accompanying? Did you, did you finish your question? <laughs> yes, I did. I put a uh huh at the end of it. <laughs> do you say that accompanying what? That accompanying memory? No, 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 the other way. No, no, no. Oh, pleasure. Accompanying pleasure. Oh. And he was saying, did he not a short while ago, that an experience of this stuff called mind stuff, mm -hmm. things of the mind, well, it's always uh, affected by. Experience of pleasure. That is one, one can experience pleasure in such a state. 
Well, wait a minute. Is that my mind, your mind, or true mind? Does it follow then an experience or a true mind? Would that be the kind of a state in which one would be affected by pleasure? Well, I'll ask someone else and get the right yeah. answer. Yeah. This is where it's going. This is where we're going. Study of the mind. Okay, what is conditions, by the way, for the good? Because the question we're asking is, is the true mind the same Hey, remember, same, identical, equal, remember those terms? Mm -hmm. Similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The good? If so, then what must it be? Come on, what are the conditions? The quality? Sufficient, perfect, and such as to be chosen by all. Chosen first. first. Sufficient. Perfect. Perfect and such as to be chosen by all living creatures, which would be able to live thus all their lives. If, and if any of us chose anything else, he would be choosing contrary to the nature of the truly desirable, not of his own free will, but from ignorance or some other necessity. Yeah, and you're at section? Uh, 22B. Everyone? <laughs> That's before A. <laughs> I think it's after A. But it's after C. 22B. Yeah, but you see, he chickened out on that. We have to be careful of Socrates. So. Uh -huh. Because he's not talking about true mind in that. He's putting in people. Ah. Remember that line in right in the middle? Which would be which would be able to live thus all their lives. Mm -hmm. So he drew, right? He right. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mean he's describing true mind as also divine? Yeah. Or is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, say it. Again. Come on! <laughs> Jump okay, in. If dreams are the true mind, right? That's the when the mind is functioning. Let's see if anybody in their dreams pursues pleasure. Is it likely that you're someone who's had dreams? Yeah, I have. Well, can you, can well, you reflect on your own dreams? What would you say? Well, you don't know your own dreams? Right. Wait a minute, let me ask you a question. Wait, Is it possible? Yes. Do you, you accept help? Yeah, yeah. About your dreams? Okay, no, about, 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 about his own dreams. Oh, yeah. Sure, you ever like flown in a dream or something? Yeah. Was it not pleasurable? I thought it was pretty cool. I went with it in the dream. Yeah, it was okay. pleasurable. Yeah, I thought it was complete on this. Yes, yeah. they do. And therefore, true mind is not without pleasure seeking. But wouldn't you want to know whether or not it met those conditions that Barbara just quoted from the text? I don't know. I forgot what she quoted. It's his point. Let me put, give it back to him. That's a guy. Okay, what do you right? think? Give it back to him. Why? Wow. Do you want to do the When you asked in the dream, would anyone under that condition go for pleasure? Yeah. Yeah. If a dream is pure mind. Well, I just... Right, so if you want to do a problem, we're going to go. Good. When we're uh, sufficient, perfect. Oh. Such to be chosen by... Perfect, right? Sufficient means... Self-sufficient means what? Right. It does not need anything other than Complete. itself. <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Here, this is the issue. Come on. Is it subjective. possible to have a dream, mm -hmm. right, such that it does not have any accompanying experience of pleasure? Right? That's the issue, is it not? Would you agree 
that the dream we just no, explored. Yeah. No, no, go no, ahead. I was, I was taking the opposite position that I was assuming that dreams as examples of true mind would not have pleasure I totally agree with you. So the question is, can yes. a dream have no. a pursuit no, of pleasure? I agree. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Would you agree in terms of dreams, we often ask, is there a goal? Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? That means rational mind. It means it's not su something is in not sufficient. If there's a goal and a struggle to reach it, what kind of activity is going on in the dream? To Seeking to resolve something, is yeah, that right? Ah. Yeah. Ah. So look here. Go along with it. Say, okay, that's one class. Okay. Then is there is it possible that someone can have a dream without any struggle, without any drama? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Just one shot. Hey, all I remember is a snapshot of a dream. <clears throat> yeah. But we could still ask, by the way. Are, are you the dreamer in the dream? And what state of mind are you in? And if they gave it, we know there's some state of mind that accompanies the dream. Mm -hmm. And we want to look for, okay, not those. All right, is there one then without it? Wait a minute, without the individual in the dream. If it follows that in a dream, there is always a state of mind that accompanies the image of the person in the dream. Then we just have to say, is it possible to have a dream without the, without you, the dreamer, being the subject of the dream? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had dreams like that. Yeah. yeah. Then would you agree we should be able to look at several of them and see whether or not, even though there is no personification of the person in the dream. Nonetheless, there is always or there is not the presence of pleasure in any one of these so-called dreams. Agree? Yeah. All right. Okay. One or the other. Yeah. It's either there or it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what will we shop for? Where uh, it is not. Good. Okay. Good. Okay, let's assume there is such a thing and call for witnesses. Could you, do you have any particular dream that would fit this category? Then if not, we'll move to someone else. If so, could you, could you make a statement about it? She makes a statement about it and we ask her whether there was any sense of enjoyment in it. You and I will wonder or not whether or not there's that accompanying pleasure along with it, would we not? We're just having a private discussion here. Okay. Well, I had some dreams once where I was like in an airplane, and first I was like in the back as a passenger, and then in the next dream I was a little further up, and then in the next dream I was like the co-pilot, and then in the last dream I was the pilot. <coughs> but would we not want to know whether or not there was an accompanying state of mind to that image, and if so, that wouldn't fulfill the conditions of this discussion, would it? Since we're looking for a dream where one or two things, mm -hmm. either the person is there without any consequence of the experience of pleasure, or whether they are not there, and therefore we don't have to deal with that, but look at a dream where the dreamer is not a subject in the dream to see whether in those kinds of dreams whether there is an accompanying experience of pleasure. When they just right. observe it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sam? Could you briefly clarify why why is it an important issue whether there is an experience of pleasure in dreams? I'm, I'm sort of confused. Why, why is that? Because she's raising the point of the idea of the role of mind and said that it's likely that in true mind... There's no pleasure. Uh -huh. but, but it really raises another question, though. <clears throat> And that is the one that we were going towards, you see. Is it possible that pure mind, true mind, or the good, has no pleasure connected with it at all? Or pain. Okay, uh, okay. Let, let me push it. Okay. This is the issue that often is discussed in terms of these two terms. All right?
pleasure and bliss. <clears throat> Does it? Could there not be an experience and a dream of bliss? With or without, here, with the person, without the person. But does it follow that if the person or in the experience of the dream there is bliss, that therefore that's pleasure, or are they different? That's where this goes. Doesn't Socrates at the beginning of this say that the state we're looking for, you know, is happiness? When we possess the good, that's right. happiness is the result. Now, unless I'm totally mistaken, I don't think that has anything to do with pain or discomfort. Because the idea of, pl of happiness may be concerned with bliss and not pleasure. Well, uh, no, no, we're not talking about that okay. issue, but I'm just okay. saying okay. he Go uses ahead. the word, the translators always seem to use the word happiness, and I cannot, I, I cannot understand that issue unless we define clearly what that happiness is in possessing the good, because it can't be a pleasure. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. That's where we are. You have absolutely the right question. Yeah, that's where we're going. You got it. And this word is a curious word in English. Is that your name, Alan? I'm sure. I'm sure. They don't have another. They don't have another. Which word. suggests what? Blessed. Or, or, or having. It can mean. What? The range of uses? Yes, because dy eodaimonion is usually happiness. And daimon is a word that. that well, Socrates talks about his daimon directing him, but people translate it as blessed, and I don't know what else. Anybody? Greek, 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 Greek persons? So, Why contributors? So the background issue we're raising is whether or not the Greek idea of happiness, happiness is translatable with the word happiness or not, and we're calling on people to reflect upon it from well, the Greek, which, but, which is eudaimon. Yeah. But we're talking about is function here. It's function. It's, the, it, its function. The function of whatever it is is not pleasure. I look at that's absolutely right. That's what we're asking. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship between these two? Or if we don't need the word bliss and we use the Greek or the English happiness. Okay, so the question then is happiness pleasure. In terms of women, in terms of this category. Yes, oh absolutely. No. See, behind this is another interesting question, which is, is the kind of good that is experienced with bliss a subordinate state, and the higher one would, would be without it? That's where we're going, with true mind, good, that's where we're going. In the, in the divided line, is that the difference, you know, between the knowledge of the good and the good itself. Hmm. Uh, okay. See, when you're talking about knowledge on this level, uh, you're talking about something that can, right? The intellect, right? Right. Intellecting the intelligible. Right. And um, that's a dynamic, isn't it? Because this is a process, this is seeing, this is the object. And therefore, in any dynamic, it is likely, therefore, that there would be some accompanying state along with it, since it's a dynamic. Right. Therefore, whether or not the good itself contains that kind of a dynamic, and therefore is or is not in that category. And By so, the way, going back to your question, right? Uh, remember, in the divided line, there's something, uh, the cause of knowledge and the, all the cognitive functions is the good. Right. So it's not in the so-called categories, cognitive categories, from image thinking to uh, knowledge. 
and or that, knowing. And that's why Socrates uses the analogy of the sun and its light. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. Then okay. it's beyond wisdom. Pardon? Then it would be beyond wisdom. Pardon? The same with wisdom? Then it would be beyond wisdom. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, that's a strange word. You have to watch that with care. Um, this is the difference between, remember, the two kinds of dialectic, the positive and the negative. Right, book seven, the dialectic versus book six, the dialectic. Because book seven, there are no qualities. Question, is that state of mind without qualities, therefore, does it accompany this? Then it has a quality. Right. Then the implications are clear, right? Right, right. No. No? <laughs> then the implications are not clear. Well, I was just asking, what are the implications? <laughs> well, um, you had to ask. If, if, it works on a couple of assumptions, okay? If book seven, the dialectic, is a dia negativa, all negatives, in which even the negatives are denied, right? <clears throat> then nothing can be said of it. Since nothing can be said about it, if you can nonetheless say, but by the way, in that state there's always something that accompanies it, what? Bliss. Then it would be a quality. It wouldn't fit the negative dialectic. Right. right. Then because you could still say it has a property. Then, if it has a property, then it wouldn't be a one. No, go ahead. Excuse me. Okay, then, no, no. Um, Bradley was saying, therefore, that state of mind with the bliss would not be the ultimate state of mind being a, a That would follow. That would follow. But then you're calling, you're calling the bliss state wisdom, right? I wasn't. That's the problem with the hamburger. Remember that problem with the hamburger? Yeah. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> okay. I thought it was a hot dog. It was not. It was not well, how do you know a variation of the story of the hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> well, because hot dogs and fingers were more comparable. Well, that's the story of the monk, right, who was walking down Main Street and he was chomping away on a hamburger. <laughs> And it was said that he was in a state of bliss. Could he enjoy the hamburger? Oh, could he enjoy it? I thought it was, could he stop eating before? Or should he... He <laughs> ate his arm. Change it for a hot dog. That was the dilemma. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such foolishness. How did we ever get on this? I need a cup of coffee. What do you think? Take a break? Take a yeah. break. Ah, you show signs of memory. I'm going for, I'm going for memory. I'm going for <laughs> pleasure. Really? We landed on a 22 CD, did we not? That's where we left. Yeah. And the question you see that we're raising is, This is where we are. <clears throat> Started out these two being contested 
which one is superior, and now they're going for the mixed, and now we're reaching this point. <coughs> the cause of the, the cause of the mixed life. And while we go through the five levels, it's good to continue the discussion on the nature of the mixed life, but we want to know whether or not the cause, hey, is, it, is this without this and without this? Or with one but not the other? That's where we're going. So therefore, it's at this point as, uh, he's introducing the cause. And therefore, I'm going ahead a couple of pages to 23, C, D, E, got it? He's introducing the cause as God. And this is a God that functions, that does something. So we have two questions. In the way in which this God functions, is there evidence of one or the other, or the mixed? <clears throat> and apart from the way that God functions, is that true mind, or is there a way in which you can talk about God independent of the way he functions? Mm -hmm. And that's the subjects we're going to go into mm -hmm. as we continue in the five levers. Okay, that's what I just wanted to... Yeah. Okay, good, good. We quit? Good place? Good place. Good place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.